Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be another great video because it's a special request from Dennis Solomani, 1876. And he's asking, can we make a digital workflow using tie bases and a split file PFM as a restoration? I know Ivokla discontinued the press to metal POM option, but at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a great alternative of a company that offers press to metal, press to zirconia, and an Emacs alternative for a great price. The whole order form is fairly simple, but I want to clarify some critical steps. For example, I'm choosing pressed crown, and the whole order form is screw retained with an extra scan body scan. The substructure is going to be printed and the overstructure is going to be milled wax. I'm choosing a shade, save the order form and then I'm going to go into the design. This iOS scan contains two scan flags. The first one is RP, the second one is WP. You have to download a special library at the Exocate website from Noble BioCare to have access to the Noble BioCare universal base option, non-engaging. In this case, both implants are conical connections. So I'm selecting conical connection RP for the first side. And the scan flags are fairly good exposed. So I don't have any issue with the alignment. I'm selecting WP for the second one. And here as well, the alignment is no issue. If the scan bodies are a little bit buried, you can drag the slider up to have ExoCAD expose the scan body a little bit less and the alignment is much easier. In this case, the selection of the immersions profile is not so critical because the tie bases are not deep buried under the tissue. I'm going to demonstrate this anyway because in some cases you might need it. If you are designing the framework in the chain mode, you have to imagine that you're designing the overstructure, what's going to be in wax on top of the framework later on. What it means is if you're designing this part too narrow, the framework is going to be too narrow as well and might break in some instances. The same thing is valid for the margin area. If the margin area is too thin, the immersions profile will be too thin at the framework as well. That has an impact on the immersions profile of the entire crown coming out of the tissue. After that, we are designing the occlusion and the proximal contacts. And if you don't know the special rules for adjusting the occlusion on implant crowns, I highly recommend you're going to watch the video how to design a tie based crown. And you can find the link in the description. After that, we are reducing the framework from the previously designed overstructure. We're using the 0.8 millimeter settings in the depth settings, and that is how much the framework is getting reduced from the full contour design. Make sure that the connectors are thick enough and they are not extending over the occlusal table of the wax up. But the most exciting part comes now when it comes to the screw channel. The previous video I was showing you that I'm clicking off on the screw channel because all I need is a hole. In this case, I need to create a little chimney and I can adjust the position and the height of the chimney with these little sliders. In some instances, you can bury the chimney a little bit, let's say 0.3 millimeter under the substructure. So when you press over it and finish the restoration, you don't see a metal wing coming out of the occlusion. Now you're going to print the framework, invest it and cast it in metal, then opaque it and overpress it in porcelain. If you haven't seen my video on how to contour teeth, I highly recommend it that you're going to watch it now. After you glaze the restoration, you have to cement the tie bases into the metal framework. Make sure you don't do it before because otherwise the cement is going to burn out. Of course, you can also layer the porcelain onto the framework, but I recommend to overpress it. And like I said in the beginning, I recommend the website AP Press. And AP Press has a variety of products. For example, they have pressables for zirconia, pressables for metal, and also a lithium disilicate. You can select ingots for every single Vita shade, or if you want to narrow down your inventory, you can also select the value-based ingots. And the value-based ingots are made out of four different choices. It's dark, dark plus, medium, and light. And then you're going to stain these value-based ingots according to your Vita shape. What I personally find most exciting is that they have a 400 gram ring with three different chambers to press ingots in. 
You finish your framework like I showed you before, you mill the overstructure and wax. They also have wax blanks available. You assemble everything together, you invest it, you press it, and when you finish it, you have this wonderful restoration. You can stain even with porcelain margins, and you have a wonderful overpressed restoration. If you like this design but want to go a step further and learn how to design more complex cases, especially using OptiSplint and full mouse cases, I have a great video here where you can learn how to skip several steps like verification check. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Hit the notification bell. Until then, stay tuned.